everybody, my name is Sarah Jo. This week, I'm co-hosting music lessons with Carlos. See you! Welcome, everybody, to another live session in music lesson webinar with Carlos. Today, we will cover different topics, such as ear training, music theory, keyboard skills, chord progressions, and contemporary voicings. We also have some new piano tutorials, so stay tuned and let's get started. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Yeah, Sarah Joe, for uh, sharing your Blues Lick collection in all 12 keys. <clears throat> I always say that uh, as soon as I watch those videos, I want to go and I want to start practicing, but then I have to teach a class, I have to do so many things. But sometimes late at night, sleeping less and practicing more. Yeah, that's going to be one of my mottos. Yeah, yeah and also, the other day I was listening to this track, uh, I think it's called Tricotism by Oscar Peterson. And it's one of the first albums that I heard by Oscar Peterson when I was 10 years old. And even to now, to these days, you know, <laughs> when I listen to that track, I'm, I'm just so amazed. Okay, so I want to play this, um, this uh, Blues Lick number four. Yeah, and so that uh, we can practice along and also I'm going to leave this video on and I'm, uh, later on it's going to be also in YouTube, in my YouTube channel. Yeah, so uh, if you cannot see it here, but uh, you prefer to see it in uh, YouTube, you know, either way. Either way. So, <clears throat> also, I want to have some uh, comments. You know, so far, uh, I've... Um, uh, been uh, uh, creating all my all my video tutorials, you know, and I'm uh, in English, but you know, actually Spanish is my model, mother language. And many uh, students have been uh, have been uh, writing me, Carlos, why don't you do a whole series in Spanish? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, it's just uh, <laughs> they get. I have to sleep less and maybe do more things. Yeah, so. Time is the challenge. Time is the big challenge. So now, 
Before I go in uh, and start talking too much, uh, I would like to review Blue Slick number four. Yeah, Blue Slick number four in all 12 keys. So here we start. Okay, good, good, good. So, but we're gonna do something else. We're gonna do something else now. Now it's now is the time to work uh, for working out. And I always like to start with chromatic scales. And why do I want to start with chromatic scales? Because, because. Oops, key of A flat. Because uh, in one pass. Yeah, in uh, with a movable dull solvage, and uh, we cover all the harmonic relationships. Yeah, all the harmonic r relationships they are in the movable dull uh, system. Yeah, the movable dough in uh, jazz harmony or chord scale harmony, more properly called now these days, <clears throat> works beautiful. Yeah, together. Yeah, works beautiful. Yeah, so that's why this is my favorite warm-up and we're gonna do this in all 12 keys and we're gonna explore a always um, tra uh, open key centers and traditional key centers yeah so why open key centers yeah, it's, it's um, a way of writing music especially now in the 21st century yeah that uh, because a composer's music is so chromatic and if you don't want to sound like Schoenberg but you know uh, still have a sense of tonality yeah but still our music is now so uh, uh, it's all over the place harmonically wise yeah so many composers just choose okay I'm just gonna write everything in, in an open key center okay good Time to practice. <clears throat> okay. And how about, um, well, we're gonna practice in uh, treble and bass clef together. Yeah, so play along on the piano, on the bass, on the guitar, yeah. Or if you're a vocalist, you can just sing along. So here we go. Descending. Do, ti, te, la, le, sol, se, fa, mi, me, re, ra, do. Okay, 
let's do another pass. Now we're going to use uh, traditional key signatures, but I want to do something else. I would like you to touch the keys on the piano, but you're not going to play, but you're going to sing. So that would imply that your musical inner hearing is somewhat strong. Yeah. So that's the next level. That's the next level. Okay. If you're, if you're with your bass, you know, same thing. Just touch the strings of the bass, but don't actually play them, yeah? So by why touching them? Because you still want to create the kinesthetic connection, you know, the feeling connection with your instrument. So here we go. <clears throat> Do, di, re, re, mi, pa, fi, so, si, la, li, ti, Descending. Do, ti, te, la, le, sol, se, fa, mi, me, re, ra, do. Okay. Very good. So, this is for guitar players and piano players, but, you know, let's see. Also, what you can do is you can actually take every single note and reharmonize it. Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah, and then you can sing the top note. You know, maybe A flat, you know, I want uh, to see the possibilities, yeah? Maybe um, if I would be teaching this technique, maybe we can start in C. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah, so we can start. Do, di, re, re, mi, fa, fi, so, si, la, li, ti, do. And maybe we can work with do. Maybe sharp one. Di, re, re, mi, fa, fi, so, si, la, li, ti, do. Yeah, and then we can uh, 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 start var uh, um, making as many vari uh, harmonic variations that we can have. Also descending. Yeah, this is this is a more advanced exercise. Yeah, and this is this is almost reminds me the practice that uh, Kenny Werner yeah does with his students. You know, he just has one note, he has another note, and then he starts reharmonizing. Yeah, all the uh, you know as many possibilities. Yeah, so we can try something like that with a humble humble uh, chromatic melodic line. Yeah, and I did it. I changed it in C just to make my point a bit different, and then descending C. How here we have a te, te flat seven is completely different than li, which is the sharp six harmonically. Yeah, they're completely different. Yeah, let's let's explore. Do. Okay, that's still the same. T. How about a seven in a minor major seven chord? T. I'm gonna have an A flat major seven over C. Yeah, I'm 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 just changing now, changing. How about la? I'm going to have a diminished major 7 with 9, 11, and 13. Ooh, this sounds like a Duke Ellington chord. Yeah, then we have a Le. How about a flat 13 chord that we're going to practice uh, later today? So, but so I want to do something else. How about if we do an F minor 6, 9 over C? Ooh, that sounds nice. Yeah, then we have C. C is not Fi. So we have sharp 11. Yeah, we have a sharp 11 and we have a flat 5. So C would be more like a flat 5. Yeah, we can be the flat 5 in a diminished chord. Yeah, very simple. Maybe we can add a 9. Then we have Fa. Fa can be an 11 or can be a 4. How about an 11 in a minor 7 flat 5 chord with a 9? Then we have Mi. Mi. Me, it's just me. Okay, how about me? I'm gonna have a minor seven, but I'm gonna have a voicing in fifths. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, then we have Ray. What am I gonna do with Ray? How about if I have this voicing? This voicing would be almost like a <clears throat> A flat altered, but with a third in the bass. Yeah, and still I'm having Re on top. Ra. 
I'm gonna have my flat nine, straight ahead flat nine. And how about here do? I'm gonna I wanna have a D flat major seven with the bass in C on the seventh. And then resolve. Yeah? Okay, possibilities are infinite. Yeah, so now. Okay, why did I do this? Why did I do this? So now we are gonna um, continue our work in A flat. Yeah, where was I? I was in A flat. Okay, no. A flat. So we're gonna continue A flat. I just digress because I wanted to show the possibilities, possibilities of this type of work. Yeah, so that um, uh, one level is yes, we're warming up. But in another level, we can just take it and do so many things. Now we're going to practice. We're going to practice in bass clef. Yeah. So what I would like you to do is I would like you to play an A flat major triad, and then you're going to play A flat as a bass line, and we're going to sing. Here we go. Do, di, re, re, mi, fa, fi, sol, si, la, li. Descending. Do, ti, te, la, le, sol, se, fa, mi, me, re, ra, do. Okay, very good. So now we're going to move on to traditional key signatures, but in bass clef. Yeah, bass clef. So we're going to do the same. We're going to play a triad on the right hand. Now I want you to touch the chromatic scale on the keyboard, on the guitar, on the bass, but you're not going to play. You're going to sing, but touch the string or, or key on your instrument. Yeah, and you're going to sing. So here we go. Do, di, re, ri, mi, fa, fi, sol, si, la, li, ti, do. Descending. Do, ti, te, la, le, sol, se, fa, mi, me, re, ra, do. Okay. Good. That was our warm up. Warm up with chromatic scales. So now we're going to, I want to continue with scales. Yeah, I want to continue. But now I want to take it to the. Uh, uh, to, to a harmonic um, it's a harmonic exploration. So one of the things that we do every week, and this is actually something very, very useful, um, something actually, this uh, we're teaching, I'm teaching something like that in Los Angeles College of Music here in California. And this is something that I'm pretty much out of my classroom, yeah? so. We go through every conceivable chord and scale configuration, and we see all the possible chord and scale pairing. Okay, pairing means that we have a scale, we have a chord, and then we connect them together. Yeah, and they're gonna work um, not just isolated. Yeah, so sometimes, you know, uh, if we just think about chords, if you were thinking about just chord changes, yeah, maybe, maybe, okay, so I'm just thinking about chords, I'm thinking about the chord progression, and then if I'm practicing my scales, I'm just thinking about the scale, but how about if I connect my chord and scales together, yeah, so let's say that I'm working in a song, very simple song, like uh, maybe Blue Bossa, and I say, oh, Okay, so I have here a C minor. Yeah, but then I'm not going to see that just as a C minor. I'm going to see it as a C minor with a Dorian mode. Yeah. And then I'm going to move to an F minor linked with a Dorian mode. Bam, bam, and then I'm gonna have maybe a D Locrian, pam, pa da da da, G altered, la C Dorian, pa da. So and then that's gonna give me a lot of freedom, yeah, when I construct my chords, pa pam, pa da da da, pa da da da, 
E flat. Yeah, so I'm not thinking just about chords anymore. Yeah, I'm thinking about the composite between chord and scale. So we're going to start now exploring our relationships. So here we go. How are we going to do this? Let me, let me zoom in. That's better. First, we're going to do our famous cluster. Cluster is we're going to play the lower four notes of a scale and the other lower four notes in a scale within an octave. What is the purpose? So we can visualize. Yeah, this is actually a very powerful technique. Yeah, so we're going to visualize. So here we go. And we're gonna sing. Yeah, we're gonna sing this scale. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Yeah, we're singing this scale. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And now we're gonna see the uh, uh, possibilities. Yeah, I can connect this scale with an E flat major seven. E flat six, E flat major seven nine, E flat six nine, E flat major seven nine thirteen. Okay, so that's my um, E flat major Ionian in chord pairing. And now let's move on. And now we're gonna go to E flat. Dorian. So E flat Dorian. Do, Re, Me, Fa, Sol, La, Te, Do. Yeah, and that's my scale. That is my scale. Yeah, see if you can play together, you know, so we both can practice together. I always tell my students, especially online, it's so much better. Yeah, the classroom becomes as large as we want it. Yeah, if you have a keyboard or a guitar, play together with, uh, play along with me. Yeah, play along. Yeah, so you're doing exactly the same exercises. So here we have do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, te, do. And let's hold this, this scale. And I ask everybody, let's meditate on the shape, on the feeling, on the sound of this scale for five seconds. Yeah, so we're internalizing. Okay, now we're gonna play in E flat minor seven. That's a first possibility. E flat minor seven, nine. E flat minor 7, 9, 11. And in some cases, even we can add the 13th. Some cases. Okay, and now let's move on. Now we're going to go to C. Now, uh, and harmonically, we're changing. Instead of E flat, I'm choosing D sharp. Why? Because this note, which now is going to create a Phrygian note on D sharp, is related to B major. Yeah, so that would be a, a better um, <clears throat> in harmonic spelling. Yeah, for this chord, for this chord and scale. So we have free gen mode. Do ra me fa sol le te do, and that's it. Yeah, that's it. And let's again, let's meditate on this shape, and we can he uh, sing it again. Do ra. Do, Ra, Mi, Fa, Sol, Le, Te, Do. Okay, chord pairing. We can have a D sharp minor, D sharp minor 11, or we can do something more interesting. Yeah, we can pair the Phrygian mode with a sus4, with a sus4 flat 9, with a sus4 sharp 9. Yeah, and those are very interesting pairings, chord pairings. And now we're going to continue. We're going to continue now and let's work with our Lydian mode. Lydian mode in E flat. Do, Re, Mi, Fi, Sol, La, Ti, Do, and together. Yeah, we're going to work together. Uh, let's sing the scale. Do, Re, Mi, Fi, Sol, La, Ti, Do. And 
that's it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, now we're going to meditate for five seconds on this shape. Chord pairing, yeah, with Lydian mode. E flat major. E flat major six. E flat major seven nine. E flat six nine. E flat major seven nine sharp eleven. And E flat six nine sharp eleven. And E flat major seven nine sharp eleven thirteen. Yeah, so this is a wonderful combination. Yeah, that we can have on this on this a uh, chord and scale pairing. Now, let's go to Aeolian mode. Yeah, so we're E flat Aeolian mode. E flat Aeolian mode is related to G flat major. Yeah, related to G flat major. So here we go. Do re mi fa sol le te do. Yeah, and we have the scale. We have the scale. So let's just Stay there for five seconds, absorbing the shape, the visual, the sound, the feeling. And now we're going to start pairing it. Yeah, we can have Aeolian mode with an E flat minor, E flat minor 7, and E flat minor 7, 9, 11. Okay, so that's a great way of pairing this chord. There is another, there is another, um, way that we can actually uh, play. This is kind of different. This is this is not so much based on a tertial harmony. This is more like a model, model chord. How about if we play a B flat major seven with a bass on E flat. This is a very nice, very nice chord to have. Yeah, when we have an E flat major seven, but it's not a tonal voicing it's more like a model if if you want to explore that area and now let's go to the last one okay i'm back in harmonic spelling i'm back with a d sharp not a, a e flat so let's check it out so why because this a d sharp locrian mode is connected to e major yeah, so that's the relationship. Yeah, so now we're gonna build the scale. Do, ra, mi, fa, si, le, te, do, and together. Do, ra, mi, fa, si, le, te, do. And there we have it. Yeah, we have our we have our chord scale. Chord pairing. We can have a D sharp minor seven flat five. We can have a D sharp minor seven flat five with eleventh, and we can have a D sharp minor seven flat five eleven flat thirteen, and that is a great way of working with this scale. Yeah. So now we're gonna explore again. How about if instead of using our tertial system? we explore a model system. In a model system, sometimes the way I see it is that I can include a, ter a tertial, is a, a, a chord built, built in thirds, stacking in thirds, or I can explore other um, a type of voicings. As long as I'm in that scale, I can start painting. And once I paint, I can create certain colors which actually emphasize that type of emote. So we're in D sharp Locrian. How about I'm going to have a A major 7. A major 7 over D sharp. And this is actually a very interesting color. very very interesting color and yeah that we can use with our Locrian Locrian modes if, if we want to explore okay good good so now time for some 
video tutorials, yeah? And then if we have time, I'm gonna go, uh, do things a bit backwards. Yeah, I wanna start here with some video tutorials, and then if we have time, then I wanna do a course at the end, yeah? So then uh, we ha we're not so theory heavy, yeah? But we do more practice, and then if we have time, we do some extra, extra workout, yeah? Which can be heavy on the theory side. So here we go. Okay, good. Um, many years ago, with a friend of mine, and who happened to be a very dear friend of mine, a Mr. Andrew Gordon, great pianist, also a blues player, a gospel player, yeah. And uh, we decided to write a book together, yeah. And I know I was, um, my mind was in so many different places, maybe I couldn't concentrate the way I, I, I should have. So Andrew used to come, you know, once a week, Carlos, write, yeah. And we came up with this book. And one of the areas that we were exploring is, um, we explore different areas, not only Afro-Cuban music, but we also explore music from Santo Domingo, like merengue, and from Cuba, like songo, yeah. And, um, and even from Puerto Rico, you know, like uh, 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 Seis and Bomba, yeah, and from Brazil. Yeah, one of my favorite um, the, uh, 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 styles to explore is the Partido Alto. Yeah, I love the music of Ay Ayrto Moreira and this early uh, f uh, Brazilian fusion group, Asimuth. Yeah, that you should check it out. So, why don't we practice together? Yeah, so here I'm going to take you through this riff. Yeah, it's going to take maybe five minutes. And then uh, we all can practice together and learn some Partido Alto grooves. So here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. We are going to play this piano piece titled Latin Riff 50. This piece is part of the book titled Ultimate Latin Riffs for Piano, which I co-authored with pianist Andrew Gordon. This rhythm is called Partido Alto and originates in Brazil. It consists of different ways of playing the samba by introducing elements of funk, jazz and rock. The electric bass uses slap technique and the drummer will use heavy accents on the snare. Artists that inspired me to learn this rhythm include Ayrto Moreira and the group Azimuth. Let's practice the first section in a slower tempo. Let's start playing in a slower tempo. One, two, three, and... Now we're going to play the second section. We're going to play the last two lines. One, two, three, and...
One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so now we're going to practice a 200 beats per minute, and here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so now that we practice together with a band, let's see if we can play on our own, just with bass and drums. Yeah, so just let's keep focus on the groove. Yeah, let's keep focus on that partido alto groove. So here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so now it's time, yeah, to take it to the full, full tempo, yeah, to the original tempo, 216 beats per minute, yeah, we can do it, we can do it, let's practice. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so and this is the last workout of this video, and now we're gonna play only with bass and drums, yeah? So let's keep our wrists kinda open and light, yeah, so that we can bounce through those chords. 
yeah, without uh, putting, you know, too much, too much effort. So why don't we practice? One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I hope that you enjoyed um, uh, this presentation of Partido Alto. And we still have at least 10 minutes. So what are we going to do? Okay, what are we going to do? Should we work on our tension substitution voicings, which actually is very, very helpful? Or should we uh, jam more with some, uh, maybe some uh, salsa montuno in a different key? Yeah, uh, let's see. What, what should we do? What should we do? Okay, let's, okay, I got some requests. Okay, I think Salsa wins. Okay, so, here we have, here we have a Montuno, a one, a, we're in the key of E flat. And we have this Montuno, one, four, five, four, one. Very simple, but we're in the key of E flat, yeah. So now we're gonna see if we can actually feel comfortable playing this in this key. And I'm gonna play slowly. One, two, three, and okay. So now. Um, this Montuno is in 2-3 clave, and one of the things that I would like to do is I would like to practice tapping quarter notes on the left hand, yeah, while we practice the Montuno on the right hand. It's going to be like this, slowly. One, two, three, and... Okay, so we're going to practice together. So you can tap on the keyboard, but it's better on your lap. I'm not going to tap on my lap because otherwise you cannot see me. So that's why I'm tapping on the keyboard, but it would be ideally for you to tap on your lap. So why don't we practice together? One, two, three, and... Okay, now we're going to go backwards. We're going to play the bass line, the tumbao. See, what is tricky is here that we're going to accent on the fourth beat and we don't play anything on the first beat. So, we're going to play a quarter notes now with our right hand, yeah? But we're going to add one element. Whenever we're on the one, yeah, on the first beat, I want to say one aloud, yeah? So, we have three elements. We're going to play left hand, <coughs> we're going to play a pulse with our right, and we're going to call one. One, one, one. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, and. Oh, sorry. One, two, three, and. One. 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 One, 
One. 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 Okay, good. So um, that was uh, our warm up for this Montuno. And now what we're going to do is we're going to play with percussion. With percussion. And here we go. One. Two. One. Two. One, two, three, four. Take it up a notch. We were in 132 beats per minute. Now we're going to go to 148 beats per minute. And I would like to take it, you know, up a notch, up a notch. Yeah. So we actually practice in, especially when we go to the upper tempos, let's keep the wrists yeah, open. It's very important, very important. And always keep breathing. Yeah. It seems like whenever we're playing and we get tense, we uh, stop breathing, yeah, and that goes completely against us. So here we go. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. Take it up a notch. Yeah, how about if we go to 156 beats per minute? 156. So here we go. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. Let's take it to another level. You know when I go kind of medium salsa, medium tempo, they say 164. 164 beats per minute. Yeah, and let's play together. Here we go. One, <coughs> two, one, two, one, two, three, four. to get to another level let's go to 172 beats per minute so now it's medium up medium up tempo and here we go one two one two 
Last, let's take it all the way to 180 beats per minute. If we can play 180 beats per minute in, then we're happening. We're happening, yeah? So then means that actually we can groove and, and stay with that, uh, with this pattern. So one, let's play together. Two, one, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> a nice workout that was a nice salsa workout so next week i want to do the same but in three two clave maybe we're going to switch keys also maybe we can do a the montuno in d flat or g flat yeah so that's going to be challenging for all of us so <clears throat> i think it's time to say goodbye until next week yeah until next week and until then So, thank you for being with me in this live broadcast. We covered a lot of material and we're going to continue to do so in our next class. I'll see you next week, same time, same channel. Until then, have a wonderful week, practice your instrument every day, and listen, and play lots of good music. See you next week. <laughs>